Artificial intelligence, or AI, has become an integral part of our rapidly evolving technological landscape. Self-driving cars to virtual assistants, developers are constantly introducing new products. Some of them affect, make a profound changes in our daily lives. Now, for full disclosure, part of what I just read was actually written by an AI chatbot, or ChatGPT. You see, technology really does impact almost every corner of our daily lives. They're going to take our jobs soon. But it can be quite overwhelming for ordinary folks like you and I. And that is where our next guest comes in with respected tech journalist Nafisa Akaboa from Recharged.co.za. We're going to aim to lift the lid on the world of tech starting today. Nafisa, thank you so much for coming in this uh, morning. And I'm hoping this is a, going to be an ongoing conversation over the coming weeks uh, and uh, months. Um, we chatted a little bit yesterday and you picked up your phone at some point and I saw that you were toggling between two WhatsApp, uh, uh, two WhatsApp groups. Um, and I said, what are you doing? And you said, oh, no, no, this is the WhatsApp uh, profile for my from business line. And this is my personal WhatsApp group. Talk to me very quickly about how we actually don't really access all of what an everyday app like WhatsApp actually gives us. Thanks for having me, Marcel. So WhatsApp for business and WhatsApp are actually two different apps. A lot of people don't quite understand that. So I have a business line and I have a personal line. So I have two WhatsApp apps. I keep them separately. Um, all my professional communication goes onto WhatsApp for business and all my personal ones go onto um, the standard WhatsApp. But what also enables that is a technology called eSIM. I, I now have two uh, mobile lines on one handset on my iPhone. Gosh. So, yeah, um, a few years ago, Telcom came out with the prepaid eSIM. I'm, I'm a prepaid customer. I don't do contracts. Mm -hmm. So I, I got it immediately. I made it my business line, and I downloaded WhatsApp for business, and there I was doing it on the go. And I believe now Vodacom has come out, and they also have an eSIM. What, how, how does it work? Yes, so I just converted my prepaid number this week to a Vodacom eSIM. It's actually eSIM is an embedded SIM, so it's not a physical SIM. We're all mm -hmm. very familiar with the little plastic rectangle you put into your phone. Now you no longer need that. It's, it's digital. You scan a QR code and, yeah, you, that's the SIM. The, the profile gets uh, loaded onto your smartphone and your number is converted. So, so no more, you know, you're often seeing in Johannesburg where people are always doing different businesses all the time. Or even in this building, in the news world, a lot of my colleagues have their personal phone and then they have another physical phone uh, for, that is their work phone. Oh, I also suppose in a social sense, some people have a so-called burner phone <laughs> for their social lives, and then they've got uh, another phone. Um, why, uh, do enough people know about this technology being available? I don't think it does. The people in my limited circles are very surprised to hear that I have two WhatsApp and two lines. Uh, on the, the, the phone that I have, you can see the lines on the cellular network. It shows like there's two lines, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, what is that? So I just explain, no, that I have two mobile networks, and those are the two signal signs that I'm getting. And and yeah, I think it's, it eliminates the need to carry two phones, which can be a bit of a schlep, and like they don't even fit in our pockets anymore. Ab no, absolutely, especially if you're wearing a skinny, a skinny jeans. Um, uh, uh, just a, a final uh, 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 line on WhatsApp. I just saw this week quite a few people on my social media algorithm talking about unknown numbers uh, popping up on their WhatsApp line. What's that about? So I've also been a victim, if I want to say, of random people calling me from around the world. Um, so it's just people who are spamming you they're now making the calls on whatsapp no longer on the network mm. so whatsapp has rolled out a new feature where you can actually silence these uh, calls i mean we all don't want to get random calls from a spammer we don't want them to find us now on whatsapp so it's actually a very nifty privacy feature you go into it and you just silence unknown calls sure you will get to see them under your call list but mm -hmm. they just won't ring because it's not a number you have saved and most of us typically use whatsapp to communicate with people we know now part and parcel of the fantastic job that you do is that you also are on top of all the developments in the world of electric vehicles um, and there is what they call a game changer coming our way in the form of volvo's new ex30 it's called a baby suv but they say it's going to change the game because of the price point because electric vehicles, especially the ones available in South Africa, has really just been seen as something that really people in a certain financial bracket can afford. And we really need that to change if we are going to try and make a change uh, in our carbon footprint. Tell us about
about this, this game changer? So yeah, it was a new vehicle released earlier this month. It was a global release. But what's exciting is Volvo included South Africa as part of that because pre-orders opened the next day for South Africa. Sure. Um, it's called their baby SUV because it's a very small one, but it's full of tech. It's the first car to have a soundbar embedded. It's a very minimalistic dashboard. There's a, there's a lonesome uh, tablet-looking device that you interact with everything. So it's, it appeals to obviously the, a bit of a younger generation, mm. but it is 775,000. Yes, it is still ex expensive for a car, but in terms of the electric vehicles and the pricing and the additional import duties it's subject to, it's still a very good price considering what the high-end SUVs are costing for EVs. And, and do you think that they're gonna be a lot, there's gonna be quite a, a lot of uptake here in South Africa for that car? I think it could be. There's a big potential because we do have a fair amount of um, public charges available for, compared to globally. South Africa has quite You're seeing a few, it more and more. Yes, yeah. there, there, there is quite a bit based on the vehicles we have. And also in terms of allocation, Volvo has expanded the amount available to South Africa. They obviously saw something that we haven't. There is potential because previously we've been getting their vehicles a bit later than international, but we, we, it's mm -hmm. all now on the same level. Now, Nafisa, in, in closing, um, uh, crime and security in South Africa is always a major talking point, and the technology space has been making inroads all the time. And one of the things that I saw you write about that I found quite fascinating is this thing um, called the Ring Video Doorbell. And, you know, when my friends talk about these things where you can put a doorbell on your gate or on your door and it's got a camera. The big South African joke is, oh, well, it's only a matter of time when that, before that gets stolen off your wall. But you've done some digging around these ring video doorbells and you use it yourself. Tell us about what your experience has been and what the technology has done to make it so much more accessible. So Ring has made security more accessible now. You just install your video, your cameras or your video doorbells and you have full access on your smartphone as long as there's internet connectivity, Wi-Fi, and you can access it from wherever you are in the world. I can check who's at my doorbell if I'm traveling internationally. I can tell them, no, leave it at the security guard. So wow. that's what it has enabled. However, the one I'm currently testing, it just came out last month. It's a battery video doorbell, which means we, we're going through load shedding and... Um, when there's no power, you, Absolutely. you don't want your doorbell not to be accessible. So this actually allows it because it's running on a battery. I'm getting about two weeks on mine. And it's a quick uh, swap out if you need to recharge it. And if you have other um, ring devices in your home, like other security cameras, you can swap it out if it's a compatible device. Or you can give it a quick charge. And none of them have gotten, been stolen yet? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Not where I'm staying. Um, it's very, it, it doesn't look like it's something you can run off and steal. When there's solar, usually it's like something you see and you want to grab. Yeah. But it's because it's a battery and fit, it looks like a regular doorbell. Um, and yeah, I haven't had issues, fortunately. <laughs> Gosh, but it does make you feel just that little bit safer, doesn't it? Yes, because you have instant access immediately. If, if someone's walking past, I get uh, my Alexa speaker tells me there's someone walking past or there's someone at your door. So yeah. I can hear immediately what's happening. Goodness me, tech that changes your life. Nafisa Akabua from recharge.co.za. If you want to find out more any of the things that we chatted about, just visit that website. And of course, you can find uh, Nafisa on Twitter at Nafisa1 um, if you do want to follow her and find out more about what she does on a day-to-day -day basis in the world of tech. Nafisa, thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time when you'll come back and tell us about all the exciting things that you are doing.